There are four things that you must do after getting paid. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my payday routine. So I'm gonna show you what I do, I'm gonna give you my secret sauce. This works for me. Copy what you like, if you disagree with something, then simply don't do it. Or ask me about it in the comments down below. I am at your service, I am here to help. Now let's start with this. Tell me if you feel the same way. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I feel that payday is a great day. You check your bank account, the direct deposit hits, the money's there and I know the feeling. It's like, thank God I needed that money. But sadly, as the days go by, you watch your balance decrease and you try to survive until the next payday. It's stressful, I know how it is, but this can be fixed. So first, I'm gonna do you this favor. I will not insult your intelligence. You already know the things that you should be doing. Putting away more money for retirement, investing your money, making your money work for you, building passive income streams, having an emergency fund. You already know this. I know that you know. But the cost of living is outrageous. Everything is so expensive. All these one-time expenses keep popping up every month. It's never ending. So it's difficult to do all these things that you know you should be doing, I get that. Okay, so let me share with you my payday routine so you can see how I build wealth. And then I'm gonna give you some practical tips. Okay, so it's payday, money comes in, it hits my bank account. Now, a lot of these pompous rich people on social media, they love to say, first thing you do is you pay yourself. I say, bullshit. I have bills to pay. I don't pay myself first. I pay my bills first. So priority number one, at least for me, is to pay your bills. So your mortgage, your rent, car payment, credit card bills, student loan payment, cell phone, utilities, etc. Get those paid first. Okay, so these rich people and their acolytes, they say that you have to pay yourself first to build wealth. They're essentially saying that when, when you get your paycheck, the first thing you should do is set aside money to invest it, no exceptions. So for example, if your net paycheck each month is, let's just say $5,000, then the first thing you should do, according to them, is take 1,000 of that and put it into the stock market or go buy up real estate. Even if you end up not having enough money to pay your bills or your debt obligations, they're saying that it doesn't matter, no excuses. Pay yourself first and then figure out the math later. Okay, so I disagree with this approach. I pay my bills first and here's why. Do you know what happens when you don't pay your mortgage? You get foreclosed on and they take your home. Do you know what happens when you don't pay your rents? You get evicted. Do you know what happens when you don't pay your credit card balance? You pay an interest rate of 20% or more. The reality is, then not everyone has that luxury, having enough money from each paycheck to save and invest. That is the truth, I don't like it, but it's just the way it is. However, again, this can be fixed, there is hope, and this must be fixed. So it's not something that people can immediately correct with their next paycheck, which is unrealistic, and I think it's disingenuous, but you can do it, which we'll get to. And here's something that will help you, I guarantee it. And this is what I do routinely each month. I review my income and my expenses for the month. I take it on a month by month basis. I do this on a spreadsheet, Microsoft Excel. I highly recommend that you do this too. I am telling you that this is a game changer. Okay, so when I do this, when you do this, your starting point will be your net paycheck. So that's gonna be your take home pay. So we're talking about after taxes, how much money actually hits your accounts each month. And I understand that your take home pay will be affected by your 401k contributions, your insurance, taxes withheld, etc. right? So if that's what you're thinking, then you're absolutely right, I agree with you. But for the sake of simplicity, please just start with your monthly take home pay. So this is what I have to work with after taxes. From here, I pay my bills first, so list out your necessary expenses. So we're talking about your mortgage, your rents, car payment, student loan payment, write them down, please. Cell phone, internet, electricity, gas, groceries, so I'm not talking about DoorDash or Uber Eats or Starbucks, those are not necessities. 
Those are convenience, but they are not necessary. So listen, I trust that you can distinguish between needs and wants for this category. Now I look at my spreadsheets and I see how much money I have left over after necessities. From here, we move on to priority number two, which is setting aside money each month to invest. So I will take $500 a month and send it to my brokerage account to invest in stocks or put it in my savings account and earn some interest. So this is my don't touch money. I'm only using this money for investing or buying assets to increase my wealth. I will have this money in a separate brokerage account or savings accounts, no co-mingling. I will not mix this money with any other money simply because I wanna stay organized. And it serves as a reminder because they're separates that I'm seriously not gonna to touch this money. This is for my financial safety and security. This is for my future. It's for building wealth. So I pick an amount to set aside each month and I revise this monthly amounts on an annual basis. My advice is don't be too aggressive with this amount. Make it something that's manageable for you because you're gonna need money for the other things that we haven't covered yet. So just try to do at least something if you're gonna start because I mean, something is better than nothing. If, you're, if you have to start with $200 a month, then do it. If you have to start with just $50 a month, then just do it. Again, better than nothing. So just make it a practical and realistic amount. Now let's move on to priority number three. After necessities and after investing, I set aside some money for something that I'm saving up for specifically. For example, I'm saving up for a car or it could be a down payment on a home, a vacation, a new cell phone, etc. Or setting aside money to pay down your debts. I'm talking about your principal. So paying down debts on an auto loan, mortgage, student loans, credit card debt, etc. Now here, my advice is gonna be the same. Make this monthly amount that you're gonna save or reduce your debt a realistic amount. Even if you have to start with a small amount, anything is gonna be better than nothing. Now, here's my priority number four. With the remaining amount of money for the month, I say to myself, this is how much money that I can spend guilt-free for the month. So my philosophy is that you have to live a little. I mean, take, take care of your responsibilities, but you have to enjoy your life, at least I do. Spend it on fun, entertainment, convenience, go shopping, do whatever you want, go nuts. And I'm not gonna feel bad because I've taken care of my priorities, I'm building wealth, and I'm being responsible. But listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to waste my money, not even in this category. I'm still trying to spend my money wisely. Like if I'm gonna spend my money on having fun, then I'm gonna to try to maximize you know, how much fun I have for the dollars that I spend. And if I, if I happen to have money left over in this category, then maybe I'm gonna roll it over into next month for my wants, or maybe I'm gonna use that money to further pay down my debts, or maybe I'll use that money to invest it. You're gonna be free to do as you please. That's how I see it. So those are the four things that I do after getting paid. So number one, pay your bills. Number two, invest. Number three, save for something or pay down your debts. And number four, have a good time. Now I wanna bring up what so many people are thinking is, Brian, I don't make enough money to do all these things. Okay, so I'm glad, I'm glad we're bringing this up. So first of all, the reality is that for the majority of people, there's not much money left over, if any at all, after all the essential expenses. Cost of living has inflated faster than wages, and there's only so much in expenses that you can cut. Some people don't even spend money on entertainment or alcohol or designer clothes or a fancy car and the math still doesn't work out. If you're in the situation, here are two pieces of advice. I just, I hope this helps you out. So number one, people are overly fixated on reducing expenses and they neglect the other side of the equation. So what is the end goal? It's to be at a surplus, right? More money coming in than going out. So cutting expenses can only take you so far because at a certain point, there's gonna be nothing left to cut. So just like how you're mindful of cutting expenses and saving money like that, you need to also be mindful of how to make more money. 
So it's gonna be like in sports. You can't just focus entirely on defense. You have to work on both defense and offense. There are gonna be so many gurus on social media that will lecture you about, oh, you should find a side hustle. Become a social media influencer, learn how to code, donate plasma, become a freelancer, try out dog walking. Listen, I'm not gonna regurgitate that crap. If you don't wanna do that stuff, I'm not gonna make you feel bad about not doing it, okay? And I'm gonna share with you one piece of advice that is practical and will give you the best bang for your buck in terms of your efforts and reward. My advice to you is find a higher paying job and hear me out. The best time to find a job is when you already have a job. So find yourself an upgrade, that's what I'm saying. So do you know when is the worst time to find a job? It's when you're unemployed because you will be desperate and you will settle. And that's not a good look at your interview, now is it? So just think about it. If you already have a job, you have nothing to lose. You can look for a new job that offers better pay, flexibility, benefits, and if you cannot secure a big upgrade, then screw it. You're not gonna settle because you already have a job. So you can walk into the interview or the Zoom meeting relaxed and confident, and honestly, that'll probably help your odds of getting that job. And what's the worst that, that could happen? They don't offer you a job? Well, joke's gonna be on them because you already have a job. And if an employer offers you an upgrade, then take it. Drop your old employer like a bad habit. There is no loyalty when you are an employee. So you can be courteous, you can be professional, but there's no loyalty. Your company will lay you off whenever it's convenient for them, and you should leave when it's convenient for you. Another way to play this is to take the new job offer and use that as leverage to get a pay raise at your current job. So you're basically telling your current employer, I got a new job offer for 30% more pay, match that or else. So you're basically giving an ultimatum. So with that being said, if you are employed, how proactive have you been about finding an upgrade to make more money? How much time have you spent looking at job postings or working with a recruiter or networking? How current is your resume? How many jobs have you applied for last month? People spend more time casually looking at homes online or vacations to take, and they spend no time looking at job postings or sending out resumes when they have a job. So you should be more proactive here. I'm telling you, this is gonna give you the best bang for your buck in terms of effort, time, and results. My piece of advice number two is to analyze your budget. So do the budgeting thing, write out your income and your expenses, see where your biggest financial leaks are. So trust me, this is gonna be a game changer. So I'll tell you this, this is like a secret that you'll stumble upon once you do this. It's usually one category that is out of control, that is your money pits. So it could be dining out, it could be alcohol, drugs, entertainment, shopping sprees, maybe it's your dog, maybe it's your significant other. So trust me, write down your expenses on a spreadsheet. You will see that it's one category that is killing you, a black hole that sucks your money and much more than you thought. So you, you're gonna be shocked at your own spending in this category, the dollar figure. And why am I saying that's gonna be one category in specific? It's because it's human nature. So I wanna share this observation with you. So let's say that you're a rich person. So I'm not talking about uber rich, I'm not talking about a billionaire, but let's just say that you have a person that makes $1 million a year. And I deal with these clients all the time. They're a dime a dozen. So you're gonna notice that this millionaire is spending excessively in typically one or two categories in their life. So let me explain. A millionaire will not spend their money on the most expensive car, the most expensive watch, high-end designer apparel, the most lavish vacations, a mansion, the most expensive tickets for sporting events. No, that's not how it is. It's usually just one or two categories where the spending is outrageous. So for example, I have a client that spends excessively on their watch collection. So my client wears a $100,000 watch, but wears $60 jeans. So they can afford designer jeans, but they just don't care to. 
I have a client that has a car collection and maintenance is very expensive. So this client drives a Lambo, but eats at McDonald's and Chick-fil-A every week. So they can afford to eat at a Michelin star restaurant every single meal, but they don't feel like it. They like Chick-fil-A. This video is not sponsored by Chick-fil-A. I have a client that spends a ton of money on amazing vacations, just excessive amounts of money, but he gets his hair cut for 20 bucks. So it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire, if you make little money or somewhere in between. Relatively speaking, you are overspending in one or two categories, and that is draining your money. And if you're looking to fix your financial leaks, you have to first identify how bad the problem is. So if you think sometimes, I don't know where my money is going, then you really have to write out your expenses. So I want you to investigate what is going on with your finances, and I wanna see you make improvements. Now, if you want a free budgeting spreadsheet, please come to my website. So I have a really good template for you. It's free, no sign up necessary. You don't have to submit any information. I just wanna help you out. Come download it. I'm gonna leave you a link down below. Please subscribe. I thank you for the support and I wish you a very nice day. Take care.